explain this this background. Obviously, a, a Florida State girl and the American flag because you're an Olympian. But how about the the cardboard cutout? Oh well, I'm in my coach's office, and he has this huge cutout of Ron Swanson that is just a joke that everybody gets to laugh at when they walk in his office to lighten the mood. So <laughs> it's it's just part of like the nature of what we do at Florida State here. <laughs> That's oh, nice. No. You, you can't take this too seriously, right? Especially when you're going off 10 meter and you know, you're yeah. an Olympian, right? You got to have some right. laughs. Exactly. Can you take us through how you got started in diving? Sure. Uh, my older sister inspired me. So she was swimming and after her swim lesson, got on the diving board during their free time, you know, the play around time and just took to it so quickly. And I would go watch her after my gymnastics practice. And so she started on the diving team from there and I just followed in her footsteps and was really inspired by her and she had a love for the sport and I could see that in her and I just had the same love for acrobatics, gymnastics and diving and started started there. Speaking of gymnastics, how did that foundation help you transition into diving? Yeah, I mean, it was a huge help for me. I did it for about nine years um, throughout my diving career as well. So I did them neck and neck together. And it was a difficult choice to choose one actually at some point because of the dedication of time. It was important to choose one to prioritize. And ultimately diving ended up being my choice, but gymnastics still is in my heart. And I love watching the gymnasts and I watched their Olympic trials and was rooting for so many people. And I'm excited um, just for everybody who, who competed there and who's headed to Tokyo too. So yeah, gymnastics has had a huge influence on my diving and I, I carry it with me. And sometimes um, I just, I just think about gymnastics while I'm diving sometimes. And like when I'm doing a handstand or something, I feel like I learned a lot of good techniques in gymnastics that transfer over. Just having to land on your head with diving, which exactly. isn't so easy, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just a little different. Exactly. Like you're not landing on your feet like you are in gymnastics. So you just have to change that. <laughs> Absolutely. So you have a, a seminal behind you, you're a Florida State lady. Uh, take us through your, your training and, and why you're training there. Oh, man. I mean, my coach, John Proctor, um, mainly, he's just the best coach. And I just, I feel so grateful that he's worked with me this whole time. And um, so, yeah, I, it's, that's a big part. And Florida State in itself has been a, a home for me and created a space for me to work hard and to get great recovery and um, where I just see the people that I love and care about and they're always cheering me on. So it's a home to me and my coach is here and my husband is here. So yeah, Florida State is home. <laughs> you and I both know this, but diving outside is a little bit trickier than diving inside. Yeah. So how do you like training outdoors and then, you know, going to compete at Olympic trials indoors and then in Tokyo indoors? Well, because I started in Seattle, it was indoors, you know, it's a little colder there most of the year, <laughs> not recently, but it's generally colder <laughs> in Seattle than um, Tallahassee. So I grew up, you know, for so many years diving inside and that sticks with me. So it's, um, you know, it's a little change and the spotting is a little bit different, but I still, you know, have the same techniques that I'm using. And so it doesn't um, you know, it doesn't change too much. I love diving outside here because the palm trees are around me and we have a golf course next to us. And sometimes I'm on 10 meter and I'm looking at the golfers, you know, do their swings and I'm trying to learn a little bit about golf. So I'm like, huh, I wonder if I could do that swing. I'm like, oh wait, I'm diving. <laughs> Come back to dive. <laughs> but it's just so much fun diving outside. So um, I'm sure you could relate to that too. It's just a blast. And it's kind of relaxing too, right? You're 32 feet in the air and you have a little bit of a, of a view, right? Like mine at USC was downtown Los Angeles and the football uh -huh. practice field, but it's kind of cool and relaxing to just like breathe in, look at the palm trees, get your mind off the fact that you're that high off the ground, right? <laughs> exactly. It just gives you a beat to mentally change pace and then come back to it. And it's just like a little rejuvenation. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to, Katrina, I want to talk to you about when you first realized that you were on the Olympic team, right? That was a close competition for that second place spot between you and Murphy and Jessica. Take yeah. us through that mindset and that execution on your part. Sure. Um, 
honestly, I was trying not to pay attention to how everybody else was doing <laughs> because all I can control is myself. And so I knew, you know, you hear scores as you're going. And so I knew that it was neck and neck the whole time. Um, but after working with my coach, I know that we just need to keep coming back to the cues that work for us. And so each dive, whether it went well or not, I just had to move on right away um, to the next dive and let the last dive go and just try to be in the moment for the next dive. Short mindset, right? Just yeah. Forget about it. Yeah, exactly. Short mindset. Yeah. It's nice with trials and the international meets, having those cumulative scores. Mm -hmm. That way, you know, if you do miss a dive, you just keep going and yeah. uh, reset and refocus. Yeah, yeah, that definitely was helpful in this scenario. So like you said, short mindset, refocus, let it go. That's all you can do. You can't go back. So it's got to keep moving. <laughs> and here you are going to the Olympic Games yet again, Katrina. What did you learn from Rio that you hope to bring forth to Tokyo? Um, I've learned that it's an unforgettable experience and, um, you know, almost this will be, like you said, my second time, but every time is different. So I'm just going to try to take it in for exactly the games that it is, the Tokyo Olympic Games, and cherish every moment because it goes by like that. And um, I have so many incredible memories from Rio. And so I just know how quickly it goes by. It's kind of like uh, people had told me that when I got married, my wedding would go by so quickly. And, and then it would just be like over and you're like, wait, I wanted to cherish this moment. And so I'm kind of like in that mindset, I'm like, okay, I just want to like totally take it in. So that's what I kind of learned from Rio is just like taking the experiences, being with the team, um, getting in the groove with your team. It's so much fun to be at practice at the Olympic Games with them, to see them crushing dives and getting ready for competition. And then to see them crush it in the competition, it's just the best feeling to be a team together there. Not everyone can say they're going to one Olympic Games, let alone two. And here you are on your way to your second Olympic Games. Do you feel a little bit more relaxed the second time around? Like you said, I think there's some things that I can draw from from Rio. And in a way, I do feel like, OK, this is my second Games and I have a little bit more information, hopefully, um, to move into this Games with. So in that respect, yeah, I feel a little bit more at ease and I just know the pressure, I'll still feel the pressure and that's okay, that's just part of it, but I expect to, you know, no matter what. <laughs> I wanna talk about your husband and your family's initial reaction when they found out that you were on in another Olympics roster. Can you take us through those emotions? Yeah, I looked up to them in the stands, I was running over to the side and my coach grabbed me and was squeezing me so tight. <laughs> He's making me laugh. And um, I ran over to the side to see my husband and mom and they were just leaning over and my mom had an American flag she was waving and it was just really cool. I felt like a sense of pride um, from them and within myself. And it, it was it was very emotional. We all just sat in the hotel room after and we're just rejoicing because they've been such a major part of my everyday training and supporting me from the very start up to this point. So it means a lot to them. It means a lot to me and to share that with them is way more special than just, you know, being on your own to see their, their smiles is huge for me. Katrina, it certainly takes a village to achieve the success that you have, right? The support of your husband, the support of your family, your teammates, your coach. Um, can you take us through how they kept you above water just through yeah. this COVID-19 pandemic, how you leaned on them to just stay sharp, to stay positive and to just rise above it? Yeah, the positivity is such a major thing for me and returning to that positive mindset. And we all have times that are difficult, but they've helped me return to the positive mindset. Um, every time I'm down or something or thinking, oh my gosh, is this really going to happen? Is this Olympics going to happen? Or questions arise and what's going to happen? And it's, it's hard to sometimes let go of those thoughts and think, okay, no matter what, I'm just going to move forward. I'm going to go to the pool and do my dives and whatever happens, happens, you know? And um, so they just create an environment for me where they're really encouraging. And my husband is, you know, so good on the day-to-day -day things, whether it's cooking for me or, you know, cooking together. He's an awesome cook. So, um, <laughs> so he takes care of me so well. And, um, you know, we're, we're just such equals to each other that 
uh, it's, it's a really cool supportive relationship that we have. And, and he just always just rises me up. And so does my mom and, and my dad and my, my whole family. So I get on the phone with them and they're like, you know, sometimes it's not easy, but it's going to be worth it. And we, they know me well. And so they're like, we know you can do this. You just got to fight through it and just keep going and be resilient. Hubby knows how to cook. All right. I like that. What's your favorite thing he makes? (laughs) Oh my gosh, she makes great soups and there's a ginger chicken soup that has cilantro on top. I love those flavors and I love ginger. So he makes it, he made it the other night and um, <laughs> I was in heaven. I was just sitting at the table. I was like, oh, this it's like a heartwarming meal, you know, so. <laughs> Even in Florida, right? It doesn't matter how warm it is. You still <laughs> like that soup from your husband. I like I it. Do. Yeah, he's Russian. So he and his grandma taught me to make borscht and his mom really and so we make Russian um, beet soup. It's called borscht. And uh, so we make that together and we, we love soup. I don't know. It seems, it seems healthy. <laughs> so we make a lot of soups. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm getting hungry. I, I might I as know. well uh, <laughs> yeah. go get some soup over here. Right. I, know. <laughs> I love learning more about you guys as people, right? Your Olympians, yeah. your yeah. idols, your heroes to so many people. But I love finding these little nuggets that the viewers can learn more about you. So like you just said, you love eating your husband's soup. And I'm sure he's tried to teach you in the kitchen a little bit or you yeah. guys cook together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Katrina, <laughs> I know that music is also a really big part of your life. Right. What kind of music do you listen to? Why do you love music so much? Oh my gosh. Um, music just puts me into a space of total freedom and authenticity of my true nature and just being myself. And um, when I hear other people express themselves through music, it's inspiring to me. And so I hope to do the same thing. I am a musician myself and I love to write songs and to sing and play the guitar. So I listen to a lot of types of music. It depends on the setting, like during competition, um, you know, I'm listening to Imagine Dragons. I listen to Eminem. I listen to Jay-Z, Rihanna, you know, Christina Aguilera. I like like the upbeat stuff. And then when I'm at home by myself, a lot of times I'll kind of go to like a folksy kind of Americana, like Sarah Jerose. Um, I love older like music, Patsy Cline, Merle Haggard stuff like that. So Willie Nelson, I love to just bring it down and relax and hear it streaming throughout my house and kind of dance around, whether I'm uh, (laughs) just putting together my stuff for practice in the morning or winding down for the day. You and I are similar in that regards in commercial breaks. I'm singing, I'm dancing, I'm just having fun and being myself, even if I'm by myself, you know, it's who we are. Right. You need, you need it to just come back. Yeah. What inspires you to write? I love that you, you write songs. Where does that come from? It comes from a different place every time. Sometimes um, it's from just a place of, of just like love and cherishing what I'm doing and cherishing people. And then sometimes it's from a place of confusion or just pain or just frustration. And I just got to write it out. And um, so it's really therapeutic for me. Yeah. That's awesome. So in between dives, Katrina, what is your favorite song to listen to? Do you listen to certain songs before certain dives? Do you go that routine ish or you more just, you have a playlist rolling and you just rock and roll. I have a competition playlist in um, my Spotify playlist. And so it has a a huge uh, (laughs) amount of genres in there. Like I stated earlier, the musicians I listen to. And so it just depends what comes on. And I, I like electronic music too. I, if I need to really pump up, you know, um, I'll listen to some electronic or EDM or something like that. So it just depends on what mood I'm in. Katrina, we're only a few weeks. It's going to be days before we know it away from the games. It's crazy how time flies when you're having fun, working hard and executing like you are. Take mm-hmm. us through your mindset heading into the games here. Yeah, I mean, right now I'm just trying to be day to day and come to practice and work on my dives, each dive one at a time with my coach. Um, So I'm getting excited and pumped up, but I'm not quite there as far as completely revved up for the competition yet. So, of course, it's hard not to just be excited and ready to go, but it's important to stay in the process. And that's what I'm trying to do my best at every day. Absolutely. 
Katrina, USA Diving has a campaign, Champions Forged into Water. How has diving impacted your life for the better, for everything? Oh my gosh, um, it's created this structure for me that I work from of knowing what work ethic can bring, um, what working with people, having teammates, coming to, to the pool, coming to weights, whatever it is, and seeing your teammates work as hard as you. And so I think that team aspect, even though it's an individual sport, has really had an impact on me because I love that. I love um, the team cohesion, whether it's me and my coach or me and other athletes. And when I go to a meet like the Olympics with Team USA, I just feel so inspired and I feel the momentum from being with them. So that, that inspiration of working really hard and knowing what hard work can bring to you is something that diving has taught me so well because it can be in diving or it can be in music for me later in life or it can be working hard on your relationships with people um it can i realized just kind of go into any facet of life how do you plan to always have diving as a part of your life maybe being an ambassador for the sport someday i don't know what that looks like for me yet i do know that i love diving i love the sport and i want to pass on anything that has worked for me that might work for somebody else or to be encouraging for other people so i don't know what it looks like yet but i know that i want to be part of diving usa diving for forever <laughs> well you're certainly encouraging and you're inspiring to all of us uh, myself included katrina um, what are your goals? I know you're solely focused on Tokyo, but what are your goals after the games? Yeah. So that's something I've really left open for myself right now because I want to just prioritize being in the moment. So ultimately, you know, I just got married last year and I'm really looking forward to taking some next steps. Um, my husband and I, and um, exactly where we want to live, um, you know, working on some music and prioritizing that a bit. And so just kind of figuring out what we want our life to look like because we've been so hyper focused and he's been hyper focused with me on this. He's so supportive. So just excited to see um, what will happen for us. We've kind of decided not to make plans until it's done. So we're lucky that our family supports us and they're going to help us. Um, after the Olympics, just kind of make that transition to see what we want to do. He's been going through it with you, right? Not everyone can say yeah. the first year after marriage, you're both focusing on the Olympics, right? I, I mean, so. that's not a normal <laughs> thing to say. No, no. and I, I mean, I really just think he's one of a kind. He's so special. And I can't think of somebody who would be there by my side at the way that he has been. So yeah, I just, I feel really lucky. I, I'm glad we got married. Let's just say that. <laughs> I know it's not easy for the men in our life, right? Us divers are a little bit crazy in every area. So yes, God bless the men that can uh, be by our side, right? You're so right. God bless them. Yes. <laughs> Katrina, congratulations again. We're so excited for you. I'm excited to watch you just bloom and blossom and just, you know, enjoy every moment and uh, take it all in again. Take two, yeah. right? Yeah, take two. I know. I kind of can't believe it. I mean, that part has taken a little bit to sink in. It's such a big goal and it's so exciting for my coach, John, and I to be heading back that direction. So we're really pumped. <laughs>